Now the allegations are out already, but some will ask the invasion of Ukraine didn't just drop out of the sky overnight. The threat and warning of war had been out there for a while. With that in mind, uh, some questions begging for answers. First, how did we end up with so many Africans stuck in the conflict? Thank you very much. I think many Africans stuck in Ukraine, uh, young people seeking education advancement. And destination Ukraine is a, is a center point for Nigerian students interested to advance their education, particularly in Europe. So I think the square is about education of these young people. That's why you see many of them being stopped in Ukraine at this time. Well, now that that has been established, that uh, is ju just uh, about education. A uh, lot of uh, Africans are asking the question, since uh, this was uh, uh, seen coming, why was there a delay by some African countries uh, uh, for, from evacuating its citizens? I think it's very critical that we begin to address what the issues are, and that is the failure and ineptitiveness of leadership. The Ukraine crisis is not new, and then it's at this point where African leaders are supposed to plan for possibilities of what is happening today to evacuate its citizens. I think African leaders generally, as a continent, we are not proactive enough. We've got leaders who are more reactionary to things instead of taking those steps one million times for the occurrence, and that's where we are today, particularly by Nigeria. Nigeria, the Nigerian embassy in Ukraine, is expected, I mean, they are very much aware of the crisis between Russia and Ukraine. And you would believe that as a government institution, one with responsibility to provide safety for its citizens in those countries, would already have emergency plans to back with Nigerians out of Ukraine at this time. But their actions do not match up with words, and that's lack of quality leadership in Nigeria and around the continent of Africa. So Ibrahim, is, let me jump in here, Ibrahim. Apologies for button. And is there a possibility that uh, allegations of racist and unfair treatment uh, could be true? In my humble estimation, I think that those allegations could be true. And as people of color generally all, over, all around the world, subject to institutional racism and for someone like me who lives in the United States, I can tell you that those things are real. Many of them are not clearly into your eyes, but they are on the turn that you can be able to conclude without biases that these are racist actions. And now, you also might not want to blame those countries because what they're doing is to protect their citizens first, to take care of their citizens first. If we are the legacy that is proud enough, we will not even need to seek for circle from them who will have a plan for evacuation so there are possibilities of racism in that and i think those are very possible now let's close uh, you know on this uh, the polish ambassador to nigeria has debunked the claims of racism on fair treatment of african nationals at the polish ukraine border you know what should african union or the uh, these countries like Nigeria uh, be doing to help see that uh, these treatments, uh, you know, meted out to our citizens are, are, are documented and if any, uh, seen that uh, such issues are, are not, uh, uh, you know, does not continue rather. I think some of the videos, some of those videos are fact checked already. Some of the videos emanating from the borders between Polish and Ukraine showcased Africans and African students not being given an opportunity to cross the border. And these are clear. You can see that they are not giving priority to these students because they, maybe because they're not there or because they do not look like them. The conversation about, about racism is as old as you can imagine. And these things are real. Some of us have to live with it by the day here. 
And then documenting it, I think videos that those on site, those students who are facing the burnt of racism, of segregation, of separationalism, we should, the Nigerian embassy in Ukraine should document these actions and at the right time ask relevant authorities why people are being treated like this. And also racism is also an ideology. It's about some people feeling they do, others do not belong. And at some point, we might not be able to pinpoint uh, critically say this is it, because many times they come in behavior of forms. You will be told you do not belong. They will just show you you do not belong. Ibrahim Olavi, founder of Africa. Many thanks for your time. Well,